a dictionary of the English language by Dr. Samuel Johnson, in which the words are deduced from their originals, explained in their different meanings, and authorized by the names of the writers in whose works they are found. Mainmast, the chief or middle mast. Like HMS Victory herself, Johnson's famous Dictionary of the English Language is a child of the 18th century. But his pithy definition cannot capture the vital importance of the mainmast to a sailing ship, her main engine in the days of sail. Now that main engine for victory is in need of care and attention, and the National Museum of the Royal Navy has taken up the challenge, first removing the upper part of her mainmast to meet it. This is the enabling works uh, for the first stage of the conservation programme. And what we're doing now is removing the, the shrouds uh, and rigging associated with the lower mainmast and rearranging the dockside so that we can then remove the lower mainmast itself and then erect the scaffolding for the first stage of the conservation, which is due to start later this year. This is no simple pull and push. It has to be planned step by step to ensure that stresses on both ship and mast are not too great for victory to bear. The lower main mast itself is a unique historic artifact which must be removed safely without damaging the ship. Step forward structural engineers Fenton Holloway of Bristol with a full analysis to see that the main mast comes safely to ground. The, the mast of HMS Victory is essentially a big wrought iron tube with a series of timber elements attached to it. Um, it's 32 meters tall, which is approximately the height of a 10-story building, and is around 25 tons in weight. And it's precisely calculating that weight and the distribution of weight along the mast that was quite complicated because many areas of the mast are hidden or inaccessible or just very difficult to measure. We did a, a series of computer models, structural models um, like this, which in effect you can, you can test different alternatives to support it. And the beauty of this is that you can replicate in the computer what is then going to happen in reality and see, for example, um, what sort of stresses you get in the, in the mast, how it will move and distort and you can calculate whether the mast will be able to cope with it or what risks will be involved. Step one, de-rig your ship. The massive cables that support the mast and its giant sails when the ship is fully rigged must be unpicked and brought down. Imagine untangling a great length of string, multiplied a hundredfold in size and high up in the air, hanging on safety ropes. Not a job for the faint-hearted. No, you get used to it. It's something you, I do it every day at this job, so you completely get used to what you're doing and feel comfortable doing so. If at any point anyone doesn't feel comfortable, then we definitely freak up and say so. Main thing, don't drop anything. <laughs> uh, we make sure that all of our tools, radios, have bits of string, tying them all into place so that nothing can fall onto deck or hurt anybody below us. And then always remember your backup would be the two things that you're thinking of constantly.
we're in the world um, from this period, we have to get them in a condition to survive for another 150 years.